Today, we have a gentleman that um, I have known for a number of years that I am, I'm honestly honored to have uh, this gentleman with us today and a name many of you will recognize, Dick Salisbury. Mr. Salisbury, yeah. how are you today, yeah. sir? Hey, Lord has blessed me. Yes, he has. With a whole lot of years <laughs> and a whole lot of parts well, I didn't you, know I had. You and I are getting more and more of those, know, aren't we? A, or they're showing but, up more. But the thing is, we can do so much for the kingdom if we just let him work through us. Well, and, and you know what, Dick? That's one of the things that's on my heart even today is in some other thoughts and ideas I'm probably going to talk to you about, maybe not here. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for a platform where individuals yours and my age have more opportunity because yeah. let me tell you, uh, we've walked a few miles. Uh, we've true. got a little experience under our belts. And, uh, you know, well, we know that kingdom business is first and foremost, right. isn't it? We do, and we've been trained and taught a lot. And now everybody won't seem to want to go retire. I thought about doing that, and I kept looking in the Bible. Can't find I, it. I saw where they tired, but I never saw where they <laughs> retired. <laughs> well, but... But I love what, what you were just saying about old Caleb, and I think mm. about that often when Caleb at 80, so 85. 85 said, you know, I've got the strength and the vigor of a 40-year-old. And uh, I'm like you. I've got some work to do if I'm going to be there at 80. Yeah. he Well, he worked, and Joshua did too. You know, they went into a lot of different countries and a lot of different places and cities, and they fought some, and we keep thinking about how much they fought. But God said, I sent the hornet before you and drove them out. And I didn't do it. I didn't do it all at once. I did it little by little so the animals wouldn't take over and all. So it's kind of hard sometimes to figure how much fighting they did because God made them win the battles anyway. Yes. And then uh, I was just reading on Sunday in our lesson. It talked about when uh, Jeroboam came against Abiam, he had 800,000. And the biome had 400, and God was with the biome, and so Amen. they killed 500,000. We talk about battles today and places where we lose two or 3,000. Yeah. I told my wife, that's 500,000 is probably just a little bit more than Midland, Odessa, and Lubbock. Combined. If you just wiped them all off the map in one day in oh. one battle. Yeah, wow. amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. But back to Caleb, you were saying something uh, interesting mm -hmm. a moment ago of the likeness of Caleb to us. He did. What's that likeness, Well, Kate, I, I didn't realize for a long time, and something happened, I went to study it. It's surprising how many people that you'd think realized it. It didn't. Caleb was a Gentile. Caleb was descended from, uh, his dad was Defuni, who I, th I think was his dad. Uh, anyway, he was, just, he was a grandson down the line from mm -hmm. Esau. Okay. He was not descended from the other lineage. So when God sent Jacob, I mean Joshua and Caleb into the land, he was sending the two leaders. One was a Jew and one was a Gentile. Gentile. And he promised Caleb uh, the inheritance of Judah. And, of course, Caleb was wondering when he came aboard and he said he was 85 years old. And he right. asked, and Joshua, I could look it up, but we don't have time in the book of Joshua. And he said, he was kind of worried. Am I going to get my hair? He said, don't worry. Don't You're worry. going to get it. So he was given uh, the part Hebron, which is mostly where Abraham was at. Right. And that. Now, there still shows where Judah was separated out and given stuff. So it's like he didn't get the whole inheritance, but he certainly was grafted in to the Absolutely. inheritance. And what are we done today? We're grafted We're in grafted as Gentiles. In. And Judah, I mean, Jesus was the line of Amen. Judah. So adopted, we're grafted in. Adopted into the sonship of Jesus Christ. You know, the Christ. interesting thing today. The wild olive branch. True. Grafted in to the to, true vine. Today, I don't know how it is in Israel. Today, I haven't checked their laws. But you know, a an adopted or grafted in child has more rights than a natural child. Isn't that amazing? You can disown a natural child. But you, you can cannot an adopted. disown an adopted. So. That's the security we have it really in is. being grafted in. So, Well, Dick, yeah. you know, there, there are a lot of things that, that uh, I want us to visit about today. And, again, thank you so much for well, taking well, out of your, your busy schedule. My pleasure. Uh, you do the work. You're the workforce. Well, 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 I tell you what, you saw me. I, I, I can fall asleep on a dime, too, mm -hmm. at the rate we run sometimes. When you're tired. He said being out weary of well-doing, 
but be weary in well doing. There you go. And you're weary in well doing. Well, you're I, getting tired. I, I appreciate yeah. that. But but Dick, you know, uh, you contacted me here a couple of weeks ago because mm -hmm. something was really on your heart. Yeah, and uh, that's about an event that's coming up the 16th and 17th of this month. You want to tell yeah. us just a little bit about that? Yeah, as Promise Keeper, about, I can't remember how many years ago, I went to several Promise Keepers meetings. Uh, Coach McCartney was doing it mostly then. We had a lot of great speakers. They helped churches. They had point men. I had a guy meet out here one time. I met him, gave him some money in the Bible and some other stuff, and it started with him looking for a Promise Keeper's point man. And our Amen. church knew I went to Promise Keepers, and then so I went. You became the point man. I, I went to some Gideon. Well, I really wasn't a point man, okay. but I was a Promise Keeper. Right. And then I went to some others, and we. It's a long story how that happened, but it all started because of Promise Keepers. Mm -hmm. This guy, a truck driver, had gone to a Promise Keepers meeting out in probably L.A. or someplace in right. California. So a lot of things can come from those, but they had Coach McCartney. I think had some problems, health problems. I understand. And uh, one a gentleman took it over. His name is, he's with Waterstone Ministry. His name is Ken Harrison. Mm -hmm. And he paid off the indebtedness and all they had. And he said, you know, I really thought I had my boat full and wanted to do something else. But right. God said something different. He said, you know, no. So I really wasn't wanting to go ahead and take it because I thought I had all I could do. But sometimes God has a different plan. Mm -hmm. So they're doing Promise Keepers. We're going to have a rally in Dallas on uh, Friday and the 16th and Saturday the 17th. Uh, people can register. I would guess we can put a number up later, but you, we need to maybe I'll post it on Facebook or something. Of course, that's something they'll probably take right down if I do that. But the Promise Keepers we went to before, I, I went out on a bus, and I'd hope to do that this time, but my health is such I'm just hoping I'm able to make it because right. of my back and my hip. Gotcha. But before we, I went with Golf Course Road Church of Christ at least We twice. were on the bus together, yeah. probably, did. Man, that was the most fun. That Wasn't that a ball? Rock we and rolled a, all the I'm way down with singing. It was and, jamming. And down there, everything about it just was yeah. awesome. And yeah. uh, it's something you don't forget, and it may, you come home with your battery charged. That's I mean, if you had a dead battery, maybe it was resurrected. <laughs> but well, wait, we need that today. Our, we our need country, that today. People are falling away. Uh, it, people are asleep. The church seems to be asleep. People that are Christians and know Jesus is the Christ and they know God the Father, but they're putting other things first. So, you know, Dick, on on uh, back to the promise keepers, we've got a little clip that you sent over, and uh, I'm going to ask them to play that right now if they would, but mm -hmm. there's some of that high energy yeah. in this clip that you're talking about that, man, it was just fun to oh, be a is. part of. It is. That, that stadium literally rocked mm. with those 80,000 voices. That's where the older stadium. I don't that's know if the, the new old, one, we're right. going to see if it'll stand it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, can we watch that? I hear the sound of the rattling of bones coming together. I hear the sound of the black, white, Latino, and Asian church coming together under one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We're about to see the church of Jesus Christ. Churches that look like the kingdom of heaven rise up like America has never seen before. That's pretty good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and, it really uh, was. That's, uh, yeah, I'm just glad to see it come back, and I think, it's, I think the timing is, is great. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that gives you a pretty good idea. You saw a list mm -hmm. of speakers, and uh, there's some outstanding speakers going to be on there. There are General Boykin, one Jerry Boykin. I can't remember that. I know James Robinson is going to be there. I should have looked. Several are listed on there. Yeah, they're listed. Jamie, We've but there are there are prominent speakers. Uh, Torn Wells, Nick uh, Vucic. Yeah, some of uh, these people I don't know. I sure aim to find out. Exactly. There's nothing but there's more two fun days. than there's meeting only Christians. Two, do what? Nothing that's that's more fun and going somewhere and meeting Christians, people that think oh, like you do. Absolutely. We're kind of like Elijah sometimes. We think, gosh, is there I'm the only left? one. Yeah. Yeah. And there are left. There's a lot of them around. There General are. Boykin will speak right out clearly 
but there are a lot of Christians in higher parts of government. Unfortunately, the people that are more in control now seem to not be. If they are, they're certainly doing things that are a long ways from what they should be. And I know the Bible says to be in the world but not of it. Well, I indeed. Like that's better today than ever because about everything I see, I don't like. Well, and, and, and Dick, I sent out, you know, I, I try to send an encouraging word out uh, every day. Mm. And the one that I was led to do yesterday was knowing that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Right. In other words, I don't know if people understand that if we're real in friendship with the world, we become an enemy of God. We are yeah, not we to look like the world. And thing is, it's, you know, there's many things in the Bible that you have to realize. Remember when he said Jesus came to his own and they received him not? Yes. But thousands did receive him. Yes. The ones that didn't receive him were the leaders. Well, America, when we have godly leaders up there leading, though people may not be doing the things that God wants them to do is more or less, mm -hmm. the nation is still different when it has godly leaders. You know, some of the godly leaders back then did things they shouldn't have. Uh, Rehoboam was one. He said, Jim, taking your kingdom. First he told Solomon who did it, I'm going to take your kingdom, but I'm, you know, because of your father, David, and others, I'm going to do it in your son. But still, the nation went down because of it. Remember when David polled the places? And right. I don't know, it reads kind of like he thought God was telling him to. And yeah. his advisor said, David, don't do this. But he did. He said, David, you're going to, the, the, the person telling this, said, you're, you either got to have, I believe it was 90 days running from your enemies, or you got to have four days of, of drought or something, or, or pestilence, or so many days of drought. And, of course, he had the pestilence, and I think 75,000 or so died in died the four days. That. Well, those people, we don't know if they did anything wrong. The, the point here is to emphasize that nations are known by their leaders. Well, they are, Dick, because, again, God's word is, is very clear. Righteous leadership manifests peace in the land. Mm -hmm. And so it when, is. And what we, we are living in an hour right now, Dick, where everything is, is being driven to cause conflict and division. This whole critical race thing that's being it perpetrated is. and reparations. Where did it come from? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we know. The manifestations of the flesh, the division, sedition, mm -hmm. factions, it's a work of the devil. Yeah. And and but but again, if if people don't understand the concept of spiritual warfare that we're engaged in every day, then it's hard to uh conceptually understand what's going on. And and Jamie, it's harder for young people to understand it. If they don't really have a godly home and exposed to it, they're certainly not in the schools. And they're not only uh, not taught godly things in schools as we were. We had Bible study yeah. and a lot. They're taught history that's not true. Exactly. And the teachers will tell that the things that we know were true. They'll say those are not. There was a woman on today with the teachers' union, Fox News, and she, the, the people were aghast at the way she was carrying on. But she's talking about all these falsehoods that what they're trying to teach with that race theory is accurate and and they fox made fun of it and said do they really believe that well they are pushing it all over the nation i'll say one thing and it talks in the bible several places about the wilds of satan and there are many and i don't think they've ever been as many as today because all electronic media he's using to his advantage and of course he's god is letting it happen he's he not is. making it he's he just is. letting it and he's kind of letting some of those things run their course Fortunately, he doesn't let it all because if we all got what we deserved, we'd yeah. already be gone. But, but schools, we just we have not really paid attention. And of course, you could spend hours and hours elaborating on parts of government, and I, every every part of our society is pulled away from godly guidance. Exactly. And uh, people to start rationalizing Christians and all people that know the difference. Generally, they'll rationalize not going to church or not doing something they right. should do. You know, you do that one or two times and it's easier. It's then it's easier. That's yeah. where we're at today. Well, That's the is. reason Promise Keepers is so important. It we is. need to turn our hearts back to God. Exactly. And, and 
that's what promise keeping is about, isn't it? It's a, it's keeping about the promise. it's about keeping promises and committing oneself to the ways of the Lord. And and one of the issues, Dick, that that concerns me in an hour like this is that there's obviously no fear or reverence of the living God. True. That is true. And wisdom begins with the fear of God, right? To fear God is the beginning of wisdom. And so I'm, I'm very concerned at large uh, of the lack of fear and reverence of the Creator because historically, and you know the word well, but historically when people move that direction from God without any honor or respect of Him is when judgment often oh, falls yeah. on the land. Yeah, they don't have respect for God, but you'll see it today. First, in no respect for life. Abortion is an example of that. But there's other things where people don't. You know, one time I, I was involved with, until recently I was involved with uh, the Hector County, uh, uh, what do we call it, the, the foundation. And I was trying to add some words to that, and they were cautious to not do it. But and three words. One that had to do with reverence and with respect and um, wasn't commitment because I think that's one of the top words. Anyway, they thought it wouldn't be wise to put it on, but ironically about that time there was a little article uh, on one column of the paper about Pete Domenici from mm -hmm. New Mexico and Chris Dodd from, I uh, think, in, what is your New York, New England, Connecticut, I believe, they were funding, I think, $200 million through the House and the Senate to teach these things in school, respect for people and responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, the very things that we tried to put in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, these, if you don't have these, and this is what I told the board when we were looking, you can teach them and let them have the whole world, but if they don't have those, they have nothing. nothing. You're educating criminals. You're educating murderers. You're educating uh, people that will do wrong because they need that foundation. If they don't have that foundation, they don't have it's kind of like hiring someone. If you hire them and they're, they're not honest they're, but very talented, they're probably going to have your business. There you go. They need to have honesty and integrity. Yeah. And uh, it's well, kind of like going to a heart doctor or somebody. You want somebody that is honorable. You'd like to have a Christian, but you want somebody that's talented. Right. But in business, you don't just need talent. If you go to hire somebody to do your yard, you want somebody that's real good at doing your yard, not a soda jerk or somebody that doesn't right. know what he's doing. And schools are getting away from that, even practical things. They're doing well here in Odessa. We've got a lot of places teaching people how to make livings. We need to teach them how to put those foundations under the kids. First priority is helping doing that. Well, and that's exactly right because... What, what we're really talking about is an erosion of the Amen. foundation. And as, as you erode a foundation, you don't have anything to build upon. Oh, There's really? nothing there of any substance. And, and the reality that you and I know, Dick, is the only real substance is found in the Word of God. Amen. That, uh, you know, therein lies wisdom. And I, I love the, the fact that God was very generous with it. He says, if any man lacks wisdom... Let him yeah. ask of him, and he will give liberally, liberally. But you and know, so, Jamie, you can build without a good foundation. You say nothing to build on. A lot of times people build on something, and what happens when it erodes, everything else falls with it. You've got to have the foundation. It blows the house away, the foundation will still be, and you can, but the, if, the found, if the house is built well and on a strong foundation, it was stand the terrible well, winds. Well, and, yeah. and Dick, you know, I, just as you say that, I wonder how many children today, by numbers, compared to children of our day, know the song, the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Well, I'll say this with a surety. Not nearly enough know it. <laughs> I don't know how many know it, but... Not yeah. nearly enough. Well, because. and Dick, Dick, that brings us back to promise keepers. Because, Dick, what we're looking at is is the role of fathers Amen. being abrogated. That, that men have not 
men do not understand, according to the Word of God, the role and responsibility that God has given every single man to be the prophet, priest, and king of his home. True. But you know, Alan West said something a while back about that. He said, he was talking to me. I don't remember if it was me by myself. We visited a lot. It may have been a little group, but he said, the thing that is hurt most, it hurt the black race more, but it's hurt all families, is when they did, it was a thing I think they passed in the 50s, it was done primarily by President Johnson, but well, he, the wasn't 60s, yeah. he wasn't president at the time. Okay, he was yeah. in the Senate, but it was aid for dependent children or something like that, and they started paying so much per baby. Exactly. He said what happened is there were women married to men, and they said, gosh, we can't draw it because the husband, so the husband, they'd get a divorce, they'd separate, and then they'd come back together on together. the side, or he'd drift off, yeah. and the kids just really Destroyed didn't have a parent. Families. And then I saw one a year or two ago. It's This was 50 years ago or more that I'm talking about, but there was one in the paper a couple of years ago that had she had eight children and said she was the breadwinner of the family because there's a plan to not have, and the government not following God's ways exactly. has caused this to happen. They've caused the, the families to get rid of fathers. And exactly. I've had Alan and several other people who spoke to that and said, you know, it, the people that are supposed to be leading us have created a situation that's caused that. Usually well, you deal with money. You wiggle money and then things and change. And that's it, corruption. Uh, I used to say money was the root of all evil until my pastor many, many years ago said, Dick, no, no, it's, it's the, the love, love of money. It's yeah. the love of and money. I said, touche, that and, and, is and true. And you know, uh, Dick, we, we can look at that today in our in our government and see that the that the depth of the corruption and the deep state that we are in the midst of Amen. is due to money, is due it to is. individuals power. selling power. You can out. almost use them power. synonymously. They are. Yeah. But what did God say in his word about mammon or money and serving him? <laughs> well, of course he You can't he, serve two masters. No, but, but yet Abraham was the wealthiest man in the world at his time and others. And Solomon. And yes, they weren't. Well, now Solomon... Money led him astray. Well, it's led him true. to get wound up with eleven hundred concubines, Concubine. and yeah. I said, and they said he was the smartest man that ever lived. Eleven <laughs> hundred concubines, yeah, <laughs> wives and concubines. There yeah. were seven hundred and four hundred, as yeah. I recall. But it led him. In fact, that's the reason Rehoboam, the kingdom was taken in Rehoboam's time because what Solomon Solomon's. did. It starts, and that's what's happening today. Somebody starts doesn't just small. run out here and sin no. like that. It starts out a little bitty thing. I was telling some recently, it's a picture to me to see what's happening. We drive down the road, and here's your side, and you got a lane, and you're okay in this lane. You're not supposed to cross over the line. You can mm -hmm. touch the line, but not cross over. Mm -hmm. And here's the others. Well, what's happened is eh, we, we all want to kind of get over and don't pay attention. First thing you know, you're over the line. In exactly. the other side. Exactly. So what do we do? We widen the line. Widen the line. Well, now you drive down the road saying that line is 10 feet wide. Exactly. Well, and we're not supposed to widen. God's laws hasn't they're, expanded. They're f exactly. And, and that's Straight one of the and things. Narrow. And that's what, you know, they've moved from truth to situational ethics, basically, truth. is well, how they push fits. it. But, the, uh, but we serve a good God. He wouldn't send anybody to hell, Jamie. That's kind of <laughs> what some are saying. Well, he wouldn't do yeah. this. Well, he lets people that are bisexual do things the Bible says you can't do. They're doing today. and Exactly. Um, it's all. It's, it's heretical. It is. And, and the reality is, is uh, we have a responsibility as believers to speak the truth. And, and we know the word says don't judge, but let me tell you, the word has already judged things mm -hmm. like, homosexuality the, yeah. the word has already judged sexual immorality the word is already judged stealing the judge all of these things are already judged according to the word so we simply have a responsibility to walk even as christ yeah. walked but, but our responsibility is also to point out to them that we love you but we don't like what you're doing because you're we sinning. love you enough to say yeah if you don't change your eternity yeah. is ugly. Yeah, it's uh, people think, how can you? You can love someone and hate what they're doing. 
people do that sometimes with their kids or something. People, I just don't like for them to do that or somebody else that, right. that's a friend. And you think, well, if you don't like it, why is he still a friend? Because he is a friend or she is a friend. Yes. But they're doing something I don't like, and I've told them. But, you know, generally you figure you're right or you wouldn't be telling them. Right. You could find out you're wrong about something. Sure. But you're trying to let them read and study and find out that they're wrong about it. In other words, it's not your idea. It's coming from the Bible or coming from some something yeah. that you know is teaching you what's right and what's not right. Well, and, and you know, Dick, I, I go back. Uh, I go back to the mission, and you've been a friend of the mission mm -hmm. for a long time. But that's one of those early things that the Lord impressed upon me is, you know, when I, when I, when I first got there, I, I would see these individuals, and the hurt was deep. Dick, it was, you know, and, and my heart hurt for them. And I caught myself just trying to pat them on the back and encourage them. And, you know, if they didn't do a real good job, well, I, I said, well, you, you did a pretty good job. You know, and, and boy, the Lord began to deal with me, Dick. And he said, I did not call you here to enable these individuals in the bad behavior. I called you to speak truth in love mm -hmm. and dick if we as believers would walk that out we would see a different world the respect that they have for you walking the walk as near as you can none of us can walk it perfectly but when you're really trying to walk it right they there's don't. a respect that people that don't like can win them around exactly. they will start they'll do it god will do it through them but you're an example for them to see and that respect goes a long way it's the same thing we have when we respect people that we disagree with. Exactly. You know, if they're reasonable about what they do, they're not just being pig-headed or whatever. Right. Exactly. And you know, when you talk about those girls, I, I thought I had about you don't know when you affect somebody, one person, what they will do in the kingdom. I was thinking and it'd take about a minute to tell this little story, but okay. it's important. I've told it dozens of times. Yeah, let's the tell pastor, it. The pastor was telling one time about he lived up at Donkey Boot at the time, which okay. mule shoe. A lot of farmers around there, and this pastor came in and did a week-long revival. And Saturday morning, they were in a cafe, as I recall, or something, and somebody asked the preacher, said, Hey, how did your revival go?